Okay, let's turn to trade. Um, many times you've said in public that um, there are 40 EU, it's like that 37 trade deals that need to be rolled over by the time we leave. How are we doing? So if we leave uh, with an agreement, which is the government's policy, of course, then we have an agreement with the European Union that we would be deemed to be a part of all of those, in which case they would all roll over. In the event of but no deal, not, yes. in the event of no deal, uh, our aim has to be to maintain the majority of the trade that comes within that. To put it in context, 48% of our trade is with the European Union. 52% okay. is outside the European Union. Of that 52%, 11% it comes under EU FTAs, sure. of which about 5.5% is dependent upon right. the agreement itself. But in terms of the number of agreements, you told me back in January, they were all in on track and so on. Helpfully, your department then had a document leaked, which is a presentation, I think, to business. It was leaked to The Sun. And that shows us what the department, and that said just a couple of weeks ago, thought was the case. And we have a helpful graphic to show you. So here is the graphic. On track, six deals, including, admittedly, Switzerland, a big one. Off track, eight deals, and that includes big ones like Canada, not ready yet. Significantly off track, 19 deals. 19 deals not ready at all, including Mexico, and not possible, four deals. And that includes Japan, a really, really big one. That suggests that you have failed. Well, first of all, let me deal with the Japan question, because that agreement only came into place on the 1st of February, and the impact of that doesn't come in until January 2020. So They've both done a deal with the EU, so no. the EU is now in a stronger position with Japan than we would be on WTO well, terms. Jap well, Japan has said in the event of no deal on the 29th of March, they would prefer to have a bilateral, new bilateral agreement with the UK. Which um, they haven't got. Which, which we haven't started, but that's mm. what they want to do. They believe it can be concluded but quickly. So that most of our trade with Japan has never been done under the Japan EPA. It's been done under World Trade Organization terms. In terms of some of the other agreements... Um, are, the, are those figures, broadly speaking, right or broadly speaking, wrong? They are out of date. Uh, a, number of those, a, a number of agreements are very close. The point is this. Mm. A lot of countries are waiting to see what we do in the next couple of weeks. If there is going to be no deal, a lot of those countries will be willing to sign what we have agreed with them now. So but on the other hand, on track if, now? So if they want, but if they want to have uh, flexibility in an implementation period, they will play their cards close to their chest. This will be something that okay. runs right up to the wire. So how many are on track now? Oh, a sub substantial proportion of the trade covered by the trade agreement's continuity More than six. will be covered. More than six. Well, you could get, actually, of those agreements, you could get 30 of the 37 mm -hmm. and cover under 25% of the respective trade. That's 25% of 11%. Uh, it, it just seems to me, if this is anything like accurate, it may be out of date, but if it's anything like accurate, then you are way behind on what you promised. You said, we are going to replicate the 40 EU trade, free trade agreements that exist before we leave the European Union. That's only a couple of weeks away now. So we've got no disruption of trade. You're not getting there, are you? Well, You're that's, not there. that's the point, is that we want to maximise the amount of that bit of our trade that's covered. Remember, um, of, of that, we're talking about probably mm. about 5.5% of Britain's total trade. Okay. Most of our trade being done on WTO terms, for example, with the US, which, when you consider all of those agreements together, um, is totally 11% of about half of which is done tariff-free, so it doesn't affect okay. it. Just and the US is about 20% of our trade. Just in terms of individual deals, how many are now on track? Um, that is, is you something... You must I'm, know the answer to Yeah, that. But, I, but we have... What we are doing is, is completely commercially very sensitive, and we will keep on the case of every one of those till okay. the very last minute. And a lot of countries will not make up their minds to have a final agreement until we get to those last days before Brexit. I suspect the answer is seven, but I'm, I also need to ask oh. you how many are off track? Well, again, it's, we are working with all of those mm. for as long as possible. The biggest ones are the ones that we've got uh, the greatest agreement on. A number of those that were on your chart as being significantly off track, we are very close to concluding, for example. All right. Well, let's turn to the big prize in all of this, which is a really big trade deal with the United States. Now, this week, the US ambassador in London gave some pretty severe markers about what they would expect in return for that. And he described European agriculture as a kind of museum agriculture, very traditional, very behind the scenes. American agriculture as being much more scientifically effective and better for the environment. Do you agree with him, by and large, about that? No, the New Zealand special advisor, for example, uh, was just saying yesterday that he doesn't regard Britain as being behind the curve on these uh, farming methods and that our farming is efficient and effective. Mm. 
do you think that we will eventually have to accept things like hormone treated beef and chlorinated chlorine washed chicken as the price of doing a big comprehensive trade deal with the US which we as a country will need well we will want most of our trade as I said the US is our biggest trading partner mm. at the moment is done under WTO terms are the things that we could improve yes there are some things in goods trade there's a lot in services trade um, Will we accept things that we believe are against the interests of our consumers or our producers? No, we won't. It's a negotiation. But we now know what they want, and they've been very, very clear about it. Can I ask you, have you talked to any of well, them about hormone-treated beef, for instance, arriving in British supermarkets? Well, we don't, we're not at the beginning of those discussions yet. We can't have those negotiations until we leave the European Union. Um, have we made clear our general stance? Yes, we have. Um, it's worth pointing out that the 136 negotiating objectives, which mm -hmm. the US have outlined, are exactly the same as they have with the EU bar two, one of which is about goods trade, one of which is about intellectual property. So it's exactly what we'd have expected. It's what the US normally do uh, when they set out a process like this. But in All a right. negotiation, there are things that we will want, things that they will want. Is there any chance whatever that we would allow hormone treated beef into this country? Well, if you look at what happened with the EU discussion with the US, uh, the discussion there came down to the US saying, well, if you won't accept our hormone-treated beef, you'll have to accept more of our non-hormone-treated beef as part of the negotiation. Okay. That's how those negoti negotiations work. Agriculture is very often one of the, the sticking points. Um, but there's, there's no doubt, for mm. example, if you, you take the, the chlorine-washed chicken, a lot of our food is already chlorine washed, the, the salads that we get. The question is not about safety. The question is about the implications for animal welfare further down the track. All right, let me ask you finally, if you get the deal you want with the United States, if you do really good free trade deals with Japan and India and the other big economies around the world, if you're highly successful, what will that do to our overall economic growth? Well, it will depend on the growth in those other markets. If so, you look at the, uh, what the IMF are telling you, I can show you what your government says. Your government suggests that the overall effect would just be 0.2% in economic growth, which compares to um, less growth of nearly 4% under the Brexit deal and less growth of 9% if we have no deal. So it's completely dwarfed this by what's going to happen as a result of leaving the EU. Isn't well, it? of course, we want to have an open and comprehensive agreement with the European Union so that we're getting access to that European market and we're getting access to those growth markets. Now, what is not included in that calculation is what will happen to the service sectors of those countries as they expand. And the IMF say 90% of global growth in the next five years will be outside continental Europe. That is where we need to be. There is a world beyond Europe and there'll be a time beyond Brexit. <laughs> there indeed will be, I hope so. Liam Fox, thank you very much indeed.